Welcome back, episode 17 of the Black Eagles podcast, and something of a landmark episode. This is our very first Black Eagles podcast post-match in an actual season. Uh, we started up at the end of the last, so this is a big one, guys. And of course, it's it's highlighted by some good news. Now, I am Sinan Schwarting, live from New York, of course, because you can hear the sirens, like, right as if on cue. Uh, but alongside me is my co-host, Khan Bayazit. Sir, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, our first uh, post-match podcast for the league. We already did one for the Europa League last week. Don't forget about that. <laughs> Sure. Uh, yeah, right, right. But you know what I'm saying. Like in the heart yeah. of this, you know, the season, season. You know? like, this is <laughs> this is when it uh, officially kicks off. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think we played a good match. How, how were you satisfied with the game overall? Overall, yeah. I mean, three points, right? A, a big three points in the, in the perspective of a season in which our opponents have also already secured their three points and their and their match days so you know you, you can you can never be too disappointed with that especially yeah. in light of the fact that certain how do you say uh, the things that we're lacking currently were i think highlighted in a, in, a, in a way that were very clear like look what we're lacking it's the clearest day mm-hmm. and yet we got the three points against a tough opponent who managed to beat Galatas today only a week ago, um, you know. In the Super Cup, yeah. Right? Like, yeah, true. What are you going to say about that, right? It, it's, as much as it was evident that we have pieces that we're lacking desperately, uh, we've got, we got the three points. And again, like I said, you know, I think the front office could take heed from that performance, right? There's a lot that they're going to ho- hopefully take note of. Yeah. A lot of positives to take away from tonight. I think uh, we saw a lot of what our team is potentially going to be mm-hmm. capable of. Uh, the the type of game that Shinel Gunish is going to want to play. Um, we saw the strengths. I think we uh, saw a couple of guys that really performed well. Um, and I think the, the the highlighted weaknesses came mainly in, in, in positions where either we already have a player that's going to come in eventually in that position or uh, that we still definitely need to get a, a player in for and we still have uh, a good two weeks in the transfer window, mm-hmm. more than two weeks, I guess, mm-hmm. to get that job done. So uh, let's hope that the board uh, makes work of it because it's, uh, yeah, we have said it last time, <laughs> it's high high noon if that if that nonsensical article about Shinji Kagawa was true that like they needed seven but we were only willing to part with five like that could be the same that like right now that's I feel like that very like heart attack inducing victory could be worth the two million they may have been <laughs> pocketing in that <laughs> in that negotiation um, mm. Although that was probably a nonsensical rumor, so I shouldn't give it too much attention. But uh, you referenced, of course, the results of our rivals already, and maybe we should uh, give our listeners those as well quickly. Uh, on Friday, Galatasaray beat Ankara Guju mm-hmm. in Ankara 3-1. Yeah. Um, that was an interesting game. I, I believe you watched that as well, but we're not going to go into de- too deep into it. But uh, let's say that uh, FAR played a role there for sure. Yeah. Um, Although maybe increasingly so in the Fener match. <laughs> yeah, and then yesterday you had Fenerbahce beat um, Bursa Spor at home 2-1. to one. Uh, Also VAR playing a, a role there. Oh, yeah. um, and then earlier today, Basakshir beat Trabzon Spor 2-0. So all three of the uh, arrivals from last season getting the three points. So we knew what, what, what we had to do. And then and Bistesh did the same tonight and, and beat Aki Serbilidia at home 2-1 to one at Vodafone Park, of course. Nice. Um, so shall we get started on the on the match and, and then kind of run down what, what, what yeah, the goal scoring and stuff like that? So if it's okay, is it okay if I just run down the match quickly for yeah, people? Yeah, let's, let's run it down. Let's, let's do a recap for those who either... Yeah couldn't see the match for whatever reasons and i'm sure that you know you can find a means of seeing it or for those who who 
you know, maybe the match isn't so fresh in their minds, but yeah, run it down. So yeah, basically for a quick recap of the match for those who didn't see it, um, or, or did, but just need a refreshing of their memories. Um, Bishtish started the match really well, I thought, um, and Bishtish, it, it took a while for the for the Black Eagles to open the scoreline. I believe it was in the 38th minute that uh, Pepe scored on an assist from Ozan. Really nice assist, uh, and Pepe, who stayed behind after uh, a corner kick, uh, headed it in really well to beat Fatio Turk in the far corner. And then just a couple of minutes later, in the 42nd minute, I believe, or the 43rd, uh, Jermaine Lenz threw on the right, crossed it in really nicely for Ryan Babel and made it 2-0. And Bishesh really headed into the halftime, uh, into the, yeah, the, the halftime break uh, with a very dominant showing in the first half. And the second half, um, Akitsar made a couple of changes. Uh, Elvis Manu came on the pitch, for example. Um, and, and he for sure uh, changed it up a little yeah. bit, but it wasn't really until uh, Najib's, uh, Najib Uysal's blunder that uh, Akisar got back into the match. He gave the ball away very sloppily and uh, Seleznov managed to pull one back to the one in the 57th minute, I believe that was. Yeah. And then really it was a kind of Bishtesh for 10-15 minutes, kind of had to uh, find themselves again. Uh, we also got a yellow card for Medel in that time span, which kind of uh, put a strain on our match a little bit because he was very mm -hmm. important. Um, but Bishtesh Bish managed to hold on, uh, created a couple of chances at the end there, uh, but didn't manage to get the third goal. Wagner Love was probably closest oh. towards the end of the match after a really nice true pass by Olsan, but unfortunately the Brazilian couldn't finish it off, so the match finished Two to one. Yeah. yeah. So that's the that's the recap of the match. Good one. Yeah, there, I think that was uh, that. nice, that. succinctly, <laughs> succinctly put, kind of, right? Nice. Um, what was your? Let's start with the first half. What What were your positives taking away from that? The first half was great. I mean, honestly, it. it I was a little bit scared going into the second half that if we kept playing like we did in the first half. The front office wasn't gonna get the signals, <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> that, that were clearly lacking certain elements, you know, because we were really fluid, mm -hmm. uh, and, and mm -hmm. in particular because, and I, I, you know, was sort of rubbing noses in it, I think, a little bit in the editorial group chat over there, but I, the, the pairing of German Lenz and Ryan Babel as we saw throughout the preseason, has sort of come right into the, the, the regular season full throttle. And they were mm -hmm. they were connecting well. Early on, Jeremy Lenz was just the clear you know, he, he was he hit, as I joked, he had that Stand he out. had the eye of the tiger. You know, he was he was going for every ball. He was He um, had it until he got subbed off and No, yeah, he never let he never relented. And he showed some signs of fatigue before he got subbed. So it's fine that he got subbed, but Yeah. Um But that's normal if if, oh, if you see the, the amount of runs he made, the energy he consumed. Um but for me, you know, both him and, and Olsan really Olsan was was great too. Oh for sure, yeah. No, but I, as far as Jeremy Lenz go, I, I had I had made that joke. He has the eye of the tiger tonight, and literally, like <laughs> that was jumping right into the second half, and then he came, just jumping out of the gate in the second half, and he went full throttle in for a ball and gained us the yellow card right side of the box and gave us a free kick, and it was like, man, yeah. like this guy is really yeah. he, he, like. Did you um, did you notice uh, in the first half he was being marked by Umer Bayram and and he got booked almost like relatively early in the mm -hmm. game, so uh, their coach uh, Safet Susic uh, he had to change things up and he, he changed Versaevic to the to the left to left back because uh, Umer Bayram was already on a yellow and he was afraid that he was going to get the second yellow against Lenz, so he put Versaevic on on Lenz instead. And uh, he got booked as well yeah. in the second half. I mean, I, so that's, that's a that's a positive. It's a great stat. You know, it's one of those stats that, that doesn't really get yeah. uh, quantified yeah. on most people's you know radar. But it, no, it, it it really is indicative of the kind of energy he brought to the match and, and the way he was bringing it to them. Like every time, every every time we had the ball, it seemed like you know everyone was sort of weary of where he was on the pitch, even when he didn't have the ball, because you know he was mm -hmm. he was so dangerous. Uh, and, and as far as the pairing with Babel goes, Babel settled into the match relatively early on and, and played off of that energy very well. 
sort of sitting opposite, you know, that energy, uh, you know, kind of feeding off of it fairly well, as he as he tends to do. As I joked, you know, he could play a, he could play like, maybe not a bad match, but he could play kind of a anonymous. Yeah, match. somewhat. Maybe you could say mediocre, right? To use that word again, but no, anonymous. Anonymous. Yeah. Anonymous. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, right. You, you take mediocre to much more much more negatively than I do. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've had that we've already had that before. one out. Yeah. Not on the podcast, but we've had that uh, debate amongst ourselves. Um, but yeah. you know, he can yeah, and he can not really stand out at all, and still within this system, based on the skills he has, mm-hmm. both physically and kind of mentally, and his mindset in, in in any match, in any given match, uh, he could still come out with two goals. <laughs> you know, uh, and just have those flashes of. of brilliance that he's somewhat capable of you know so as a pairing yeah. they were really solid and they've they've been solid and i think that's a kind of energy that that we can take a lot of positives from we have a plethora of options on the wings for the first time in a long time you know and and it's not a negative that we have to have this debate about like where does Quaresma fit in and you know go yeah. you know, like but at the end of the day these are very good things to be able to do and at the, like we're, we're gonna need some depth fine we're not in the turkish cup but we are in the europa league we are gonna have some opponents where we're not necessarily gonna need to play an a team you know whatever that fourth seed is in the group stage assuming we get there hopefully let's hope uh, yeah not exactly. gun let's hope we are in the europa league uh, <laughs> and qualify for those groups because we're not there yet right of course. but all things you know uh, that's the vibe i'm getting from this match you know where we can start to talk about a season like you know like like we normally might again you know really uh in some ways this match revitalized me because it showed that despite some very clear lackings you know some very clear needs uh still in the transfer window we're also still a very talented team and and also in watching both the galatasaray match and the fenerbahce match i saw huge holes in their lineups you know i'm not gonna lie yeah, uh, they're not particularly complete teams themselves, and on top of it, they're under the same yeah. scope we are. Right? They have, in fact, they're even more yeah. under the FFP regulations than we are. But but you have to do you do have to keep in mind though for Galtzray they benched Gomis, they benched Figuli, uh, they benched a couple of guys there. I mean Gomis, their top scorer last season with 29 goals. Uh, they benched him to not, that match mm-hmm. uh, on fr- Friday, so I mean, yeah, whole, but and, and to be to be I fair, even w- still, like Eren, Eren Derdiok played a very good match for them. Uh, you know, he had a it was a pretty clever goal in that third one. Um, yeah, but that came at the tail end of the yeah, match. Yeah, it was sort of what right? we say garbage time in, in, in basketball yeah. parlance, but it's true. But no, I mean, whatever. What I what I mean to say is that like even as such. When I look at this squad and when I, when I look at what I saw out there today, we have the best back line in the, in the Turkish league. In particular, because we managed that despite yes. Najib having a deer in headlights moment where he com- yeah. like kind of combusted, essentially. Yes. Um, despite that, you know, we threw in a guy who played his first match in the, in, uh, with, this, with the team in the Turkish league, and he um, immediately brought steady a steady kind of assuring presence on the back line and, and i'm talking about enzo Rocco, if you don't for those who yeah. don't know yeah um liked his uh his few you know his 20 minutes or so that he got i, I definitely uh liked his contribution yeah. for sure but so yeah like that that showing overall and, and in particular making up for the gaffes of Najib, which were plentiful. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna minimize. After that, that, that initial one, you that's that's a typical Najib, uh, you know. He can be solid, and then when he makes a mistake, you, you see that he doesn't recover yeah. straight away. And that's one of the, one of his major weaknesses, and I think Tolga has that same oh, that yeah. same weakness. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, whereas a Fabri, he he could make a mistake, but he recovered straight Or even away. a Pepe, or like any any like sort of. Uh, yeah next level professional right in terms of mentality yeah, yeah. and pippe was great today mm-hmm. i thought i mean i thought he was solid throughout he was also coming up a lot really offensive and it's not just his goal but he was really involved um, and last season i 
didn't particularly like his footballing involvement all that much. I thought he played way too many long balls. Um, and, and he started off the match like that. In the first minute, he had this long ball that immediately gave the ball to Akisar. Uh, and that, that put us on the defense. But afterwards, I didn't see that anymore from Pepe as much. And he was really playing over the ground a lot more. And it was... Yeah, you just saw that as soon as we didn't... You know, when we didn't play those long balls, because after... The first minute I thought, oh no, we're gonna play the long ball, they're gonna win every of those balls, and, and we're gonna, you know, be in a little bit of a trouble, but I, I've rarely seen us dominate the first 45 minutes the way yeah. we did today. I thought it was almost a perfect first half. I don't think we allowed any chances. Yeah, no, I, I, this, this should needs to be highlighted. This absolutely, I feel like this should almost, in fact, because I've mentioned this before, that defense often gets minimized or looked over you know because and we've talked about how hard it is mm -hmm. to see even quality like the scout defenders because it's such a, a hard you know hard to quantify a, a position but we need to have a segment i think particularly this year you know give the, there's an uh, like give the defenders some some love you know like the one more time i want to give the drummer some of this funky soul we got yeah like the defense of, of this team looks so solid and it looked so consistent you know in a way in like pepe has this and he's in, in particular the last couple of matches he's brought this kind of tenacity that's very reminiscent of his days in real madrid where he's sort of using his si size and height and, and flying all over the back line kind of you know uh, uh it's yeah it really is reassuring like and and early on when Najib was actually still settled and looking okay on the back line he had one nice uh sort of diving tackle that for the second match in a row in fact i think i had mentioned one of those earlier in the, in the europa league match but um in general like the defense looks solid with pepe back there because he is controlling the line and and then again when when Najib slid out you could see yeah. when when he got moved up and enzo Rocco came back came in uh you could see the communication between enzo Rocco and pepe was sort of immediate and i suppose that probably it helps that they they probably i'm sure they both speak, both speak spanish because of pepe's time in madrid and because of the similarities yeah after 10 years you'd imagine that he learned picked up a yeah and word portuguese i mean portuguese and um, spanish are not the same that's a common misconception and they're not you know it's it, i'm sure it's very easy to not speak the, the the other language where you know but um i'm sure pepe does because of all of his time there and bearing in mind the similarities between the languages and all that uh for sure that seemed present like early on it was like i could see enzo Rocco on, on uh, some set pieces communicating very much actually and I, that actually pleased me because it, it was his first appearance and not even in the preseason did he make one so um yeah, yeah. I think the defense. That's going to be a theme. I think that's going to be a theme, though, for the season. Is that the defense is going to need to get some love in each episode because they really, we do have some <laughs> solid pieces back there. And even on the on the on the sides, you know, people like to give sort of smack talk, John Air and and Gokan Gunu, but I don't know. I, I like what. Yeah, but I, I think you're you're focusing very much on the on the back line right now. But I think today, as a, as a team. The defending mm -hmm. was great. But true, very true. And Medel in particular. Was that, that was the other thing. Medel, Tolgai, Ozhan, Lenz. They all did their part yeah. defensively. Babel um, even. And, and they all, ba you know, Lenz was backtracking the entire mm -hmm. match. So much energy he spent in, in, in attack, but he also contributed to the defense. Um, and, and in the first half in particular, you know, we, we just, we, we come, you know, as soon as they... They got the ball. We took it back straight away. That that faded a little bit in the first, in the second half, and that's normal, I think, especially early on in the season uh, when you're not yet at 100% match fitness and stuff like that. Plus, you know that goal kind of allowed them back into the game. But I was really yeah. impressed by that, by the instant recovery when we lost the ball almost. Um, and 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 Ozan worked really hard. Tall guy had a decent mm -hmm. first half. Um, but like so often with him, I feel like he oh, yeah. fades. In he, the I mean, he half. was even fading towards the end of the first half. I felt. But. Yeah, I, I don't. I think 
it's going to take a little bit of a, a lot of hard work on Tolgai's behalf to, to convince us uh, that he's a irreplaceable pawn in the in this yeah. team. At the moment, I, I don't see that. Um, and I kind of felt a little bit uneasy that Atiba wasn't on the bench because yeah, I think too. that as soon as Medel took that yellow, uh, it might have been a, a good idea to replace him. I was kind of uh, surprised that Najib wasn't taken off and that that's mm-hmm. because at that point Najib had just taken a yellow card and and like you said he had looked like a deer caught in the headlights and it, it took him quite some time to recover from that even uh it, it had gotten so bad that Medel had already taken Najib's place in the center of mm-hmm. defense uh where, and Najib moved to midfield because Najib was just yeah off. like unspokenly right like it yeah. just sort of naturally happened I think Medel felt kind of yeah, but that kind of ties into what we were what we were saying earlier that you know Najib okay he started today but we do have Domagoy Vida still I mean can mm-hmm. still be sold we'll have to wait and see but we have Enzo Hoko in the pipeline so Najib isn't a, a permanent fixture there at the back yeah. um, so with that in mind I think that defensively we are quite like you said I think we're set yeah in in terms of our back four uh, we have a really good rotation between Janner and Adriano two good left backs Adriano of course defensively uh, superior I'd say oh yeah um, and then only you know of course with Gokhan Gunnel we don't really have a, a solid backup for him but uh, in the center of defense right now with Vida Pepe and uh, Rocco I think we have three solid options um, yeah for sure. so there there's definitely not a not an, an urgent need there of course if Vida would still get sold then you may want to bring in a third central defender because mm-hmm. you also have to think a little bit ahead with uh, Pepe's expiring contract and he may not uh, extend. There hasn't been any talk of extending and given the way that um, the Turkish economy is going right now, um, extending with him might not be financially prudent. Um, so what I want to ask you, how did you feel about Tolga tonight? Did he make a good impression, bad impression? Um, what's, what are your thoughts on Tolga? <sighs> Gosh, you know, you're almost given every. You have to trademark. I think you have to, like, if we ever make shirts for this show, yours is just going to be, uh, like, caps sigh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It may be in parentheses. Um, yeah, no, I. God. That's a tough one, man, because I really, like, I don't want to be talking down on anyone, you know, given the, the positive feelings of everything here. Uh, and he definitely, like, cl- like, clearly he didn't do anything wrong to the extent that we you know we lost the match but at the same time there was a general unsteadiness and we noted this in the last match and i felt like it carried through here where there was just uh, there's a general lack of confidence in the team that kind of uh, has everyone yeah that has everyone uh, slightly on edge particularly when he has the ball and he has to get rid of it like that's always a sort of i kind of missed that today if i'm honest no I, i thought that the team felt relatively comfortable playing the ball back to him and yeah, I thought he was okay, actually, today. I thought he was actually... Uh, I, th- especially he- in the second half, there were moments, you know, uh, t- especially towards the end. Like, remember, there was mm-hmm. one moment, there was one ball where, luckily, at least he sent it up far enough that it didn't matter, but he just sent it, like, way out of bounds. And, like, mm, yeah. he just has that capacity where, like, when it did go back to him, at least I personally, and I and I sensed a general weariness. Like, you for- I think one might, after today's good match in general forget how often Fabri was involved <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, in, yeah. in the play in general like there was such confidence in their ability to get it back to him and for him to kind of put two or three touches on the ball and distribute it without any you know stress that clearly isn't there with, with Toga and like I uh, you know whatever yeah I don't want to harp on it because like again it didn't impact yeah. the match much today and, and a lot of that is because we didn't have the ball on the back line there wasn't much passing it around in the yeah. back because we were playing so well we were so dominant and our guys we were, were yeah. had such verb position. you know going forward um, we were retaining possession a lot of time we were winning the ball uh, in most cases before they could get dangerous yeah. and, um, and here's where I like Let's slide gracefully into our, um, you know, highlight, low light, maybe. My, I, I, my highlight is, and I, I'm leaving lens for you because I, I think you need to. Because <laughs> I'm the fanboy. You've right? been for some time. And, and I, 
I have never not been like I, I, some guys are whatever. But anyway, we'll go into that later. For me, my man of the match, I'm going to bring him out is uh, Gary Medell. Gary Medell yeah. had so much energy. Was so in terms of what we were just talking about, um, the ability to retain the ball and to go after lost ones. Uh, he had so much energy and so much just professionalism. He just like oozed the type of quality I think we need out of the squad and effort and energy. And Jeremy Lenz did too. You know, they, they, they put heart on the pitch alongside showing that kind of quality. And like, that's, you know, for people who talk about players age and all that, like I do, I do not care how old Gary Medell is like that. He showed me today how, how valuable and he's done it so many times before, but uh, he, no, he's only 31, of course. I mean, but just, I mean, that's young in our team. That's true, relatively. But you know, for people <laughs> who talk about, oh, you can't be trying to get guys who are 30 or over. I, blah, 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 that's no, like I don't care how old a guy like Gary Medell is. He's such a kind of linchpin, and I think he could probably play that role for any club from, you know, uh, from oh, from a Man City to down to us. Like honestly, like he he's such a pivotal type. Of course, he wouldn't start for okay. Man City. You know. But, but the reason I say that, like, he, there's not a single well, team that couldn't utilize a guy like that. You know, maybe not as well, a he played for Inter for, starter. for years, and he was useful there. But, you know, like, yeah. even for a, one of the, the people, the, the clubs that people have listed as a favorite for the Champions League, I think he could probably come in off the bench because of his versatility and energy and, and perform a key function for anyone. Like, I, I, I think he shows... Yeah. Like willingness to be involved, you know, and and the capacity to do it. That I was so I was very impressed today in particular because like what in an, on a day where we're all so worried about the pieces that were missing, uh, he he really I thought connected our defense and our midfield in a way that maybe didn't happen much last season uh, to me honestly. Like it was very impressive. My low light. Yeah. Let me close yeah. out. My low light today, I'm going to shine a light not on an individual, but on a position. Up front, our forwards, uh, Kyle Laren, I'm, I, don't, I don't think he was terrible. In fact, he showed some energy uh, in terms of distributing the ball often that I did. He wasn't you know, involved. Like he, he wasn't like on an island to the extent that he was in our last you know, our game against Linz. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it just it wasn't quite there. He showed, I feel like, full, like, tearing down the fourth wall. The, what the, the, the match I was watching, like, snapped out for three minutes. And in the group chat that with all of our editorial staff, everyone was really ripping on him for something that happened in that phase. So, like, there was something where people were like, oh, my God, he seems like he's so out of it, you know, towards the end of the first half. I missed that, so I can't really speak on that. But just generally, he didn't. He, he wasn't connected to the offense much. Um, he had, granted, not a lot of opportunities. But but then following him was Wagner Love, and like he he takes the big L for me tonight. Uh, he was generally poor. He was given the ball, I think, at least twice in in opportunities where he could have easily scored I would say True. and he did not uh, and he's a guy it's not like Ozan Ozukup last you know against Linz where it's like okay but fine he's our central midfielder does he need to be scoring you know is that is that is that his vital function Wagner Love was our lone striker up front and he had the ball gifted to him at least that one play where Lenz connected with Ozan Ozan laid it off just it was like beautiful like it, it was a disservice yeah. to Ozan's distribution that, that, that Wagner Love didn't score and almost that alone yeah. gave him my low light of the week. Um, but so that's 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 those it are for the, me. That's my high and low. Those are the types of, uh, of 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 passes that always should be an assist. Yeah. And at the end of the season, if you make the total tally and an Ozan has just six assists, for example, you know he gives quite a few of those throughout the season that players don't finish. And I mean, the same goes for Quaresma with his pinpoint crosses, you know, where the player heads it at the keeper or against the post or whatever. But, but those types of positions are, you know, those are assists that don't get um, capitalized on, I guess, or whatever I should, how should put it. But that was unfortunate, yeah. But I did think that Love did really well to, to, to 
get and and stay in front of his yeah, man yeah. there it wasn't as easy uh, as you'd think and uh, Fati also did really well there uh, the goalkeeper for Akisar sure. so to yeah I mean it's it's he should finish that and the thing that know, really like for, he didn't really even get it wasn't even like a a shot right like he didn't he didn't get a proper opportunity mm-hmm. and that's kind of what uh, you know like just one touch and a shot and that's a goal you know and i think wagner love is probably a little overly conscious of everything now just like m- most of the guys up front <laughs> in val fairness but uh you know just <sighs> you know I, it was really f- for ozan that that it was such a disappointment because it was such just a brilliant touch but anyway what about you, Khan? For you, what was your high and low light? Well, obviously, uh, I think Jermaine Lenz's performance throughout this game, and I'd also think that kind of illustrated a little bit of, of what he has to offer to this team, something that Quaresma probably has to a lesser extent. I think that the way they showed the heat maps at half time, and they showed uh, both Akisar and, and Bistich's heat map, and, uh, you know, just illustrate, I mean, Akisar's heat map. Uh, their players were mainly in their own area because we pushed them back so much Um, but our heat map was really impressive in a different way not just because we were all over them but also because it was so spread out Um, and you mentioned earlier that we were really fluid um, and that's definitely true and also you mentioned that Kyle Laren wasn't uh, on an island today and I think that's all due to the fact uh, of how fluid we played and I think that uh, Jermaine Lenz played an instrumental role in that because he was all over the place then he was left and he was right uh, he was on the left wing on the right wing he was constantly involved making runs setting up runs Babel was making runs uh, Ozan made a lot of, um, of, of, of of good runs that really caused a lot of troubles for uh, for Akisar um, and I just feel because this is you you had this as your low point I feel with a better striker um, you know let's say a, a Vincent mm-hmm. Abubakar which is a completely different type from Mario Gomez, who would also function well in this system. I think a, f- a, a player that you know is going to finish plays, that you know is going to make intelligent runs, and that uh, will click with intelligent players, um, that that would that, that would make this team really, really, really dangerous uh, yeah, for the title. For sure. um, and we're lacking that right now because I think Laren, and, and this is no. This is not not bashing him because Laren he comes from mm-hmm. the MLS, and I mean I don't want to talk down to toward the MLS. I don't want no, to bash the MLS either, but it's to. a it's a level, it's a level below the Super League. We oh have to be God, honest yeah. about that, and you know the, it's the not a level. It's like a it's and, a few levels. <laughs> there's a reason why a 35 year old player can go to the MLS and still oh, do yeah. really well. Um, 38 I mean, year like how of old course, is you know, we have Pepe. We we. Yeah, but I mean, let's take for example, we have uh, we have Pepe, and he's 35, going on 36, and he's doing really well for us. But that's still a little bit different. He could still be playing for Real Madrid or Paris Saint Germain. Uh, I think David Villa is still playing there at like 38, 39, yeah. and scoring goals. There's a reason those types of players can still do really well there because the tempo is lower, and the, you know, mentally, these players they don't. Laren is still kind of behind on that. He's not thinking in this at the same pace as as, as a Jermaine Lenz or an Ozan is. And you can see that. For example, against Torshaven, you saw that when, when Lenz gave that really nice back heel, if that was against the Super League club, that would not have been a goal because because it took Laren too long to realize what happened. And against Torshaven, you can get away with that and you can fumble the, con- the first touch a little bit and you can be a little bit too surprised but still recover. If that was against Akisar, the defender would have been on top of him and would have blocked his shot, uh, most likely. Uh, and you saw that a couple of times today as well, that it was all moving a little bit too quick for him. Now, of course, you know, with time, he will hopefully adjust to that. And if he does, he can become a really good striker. But I think that given Bistis' position... Uh, and how important that getting that Champions League ticket, how important that winning the league is financially for the future of the club as well. I think that Bishes cannot not invest yeah, in a right. striker. There has to be someone from a European top league, top level that 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 comes in there and that will click. And Laren, he can he can be the second striker and he can come off the bench and he can learn and he can adjust on his own tempo mm-hmm. on his own pace. 
and, and, and he can still be the number one in one or two years. I don't think he's ready yet. I don't think he will get ready over the course of a season. In fact, I think you're doing him a disfavor if you don't get a striker and you're going to rely on him because if, if you're going to o- rely on him, then the fans at some point, when 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 they when it becomes clear that he's kind of holding the team back a little bit, with all due respect for him, yeah. um, they're going to turn. That's just the, how high demanding for sure. these fans are. It, it's it will be the same at any other top club in the world. If you know, at at some point, fans are going to run out of patience, and I think with Lauren, they're going to show patience for sure. Uh, there's not going to be like with Wagner Love. Especially if we can manage three points, you know, <laughs> in our league matches. But yeah. or I, not, not just, obviously, we need to do fairly well and, in Europa League. You know what? Thing. It's not impossible that, that Lauren, um, if you'd leave him as the first striker and that he does somehow, you know, get in the groove. And mm-hmm. it's not impossible. But I think the yeah, risk I agree. On, on two fronts is too big. The risk is too big. One, you can, you can lose Lauren. Like we lost mm-hmm. Pedro Franco, like we lost Boyko, you know, and that's not worth it because Lauren is is you know is a very talented player. He's still young, 23 years old. He still has he has so much potential, and he can be our first striker. I think down the road. I just don't think that that that's now, and I, I just think you're doing him a disfavor w- with putting that pressure on him right now. Uh, and the second the second big dis, um, danger there is, is of course that you don't win the league or you don't even finish second, and you don't have the chance to go to the Champions League, and, and that's also very dangerous because um, the, the financial uh, importance is, is just so big. Um, so that's my, I, I guess I kind of piggybacked on your low light. Um, and then, of course, you know, Niji, but it, for me, that's only a temporary yeah. Right, maybe, but Yeah, for for, for, uh, for a secondary one, that's probably worth noting that Niji definitely, like he's, mm. he was worse than, like, and it's very different in a different context and positionally and all that, but he was probably worse individually than Laren was <laughs> in, in the big picture. It was it was a typical Niji yeah, performance, yeah. you know, solid for 55 minutes and then make a mistake and, and then, he, then like, he doesn't have the, the, the mental ability to rebound from that. And there's just one more thing I would like to say about Lens is that for me, for the four official matches that we've played so far, from the minutes that he's been on the pitch, I think throughout all four of those games for me he was the best man on the pitch yeah. as long as he was on the pitch I think that's very important and I think uh, we're seeing the, the lens we, we wanted last season this, we are seeing the lens that we saw at Fenerbahce and that we I think all kind of envied uh, and that we were so ha- happy when we got him but we didn't get to see that lens yeah. last year we saw a couple of glimpses of him but I think now in, in these four official games and of course you know those against Torshav and you have to take with uh, a little bit of a pinch of salt but now today against Akisar, phenomenal performance. Against Linz, he was good. Um, I hope that the reason why he was subbed was an injury. I hope it, it was just, you know, because he, he was completely gassed. He was tired. And I hope that it was just more of a, I don't want to risk getting a, a serious injury here. And I hope that on Thursday he'll be back uh, and ready to play. Because I think that um, that would be a big blow if we would lose Lens. Because I think... He was so instrumental in why we were so For fluid sure. today. I and, and I, I don't think that with a if we lose him now, I think we'd lose a lot of that uh, potential fluidity because he just brings so much uh, of that with him. Fully Great agree. Player. Yeah. No. I. It didn't. I, I think based on the the sort of signs of fatigue he'd been showing, I I, I thought maybe that was really the issue there I, I hope he wasn't injured I didn't I saw he got injured but I, I felt like he may have may not been too hampered by it at least I'd hope um, yeah he walked off the pitch on yeah the exactly it's right. always a, a that's usually a good sign and he wasn't limping or anything uh, maybe just took a little bit of a knock let's hope he's fine I don't you know I really hope that uh, next week because uh, we have, I believe, I think we play Antalya away next week. Or Erzurum, sorry, Erzurum away. So, is it Erzurum? Uh, yeah. Erzurum, yeah, Erzurum on Sunday. 
Yeah, Erzurum room away. And we have the Linz match, of course, sure. on Thursday. So um, Linz, very important, of course, that we get a result there. But I don't think that Lenz is, is, is crucial to play in that game. But I definitely hope that on Sunday he'll start. And I think, you know, uh, Quaresma was a bit upset today that he didn't get to come that's, on. That's, that's, that's um, the latest. Yeah, that was the, if there's any breaking news yeah. out of the day, uh, that would be it. That supposedly yeah. Quaresma was a little disappointed. Yes, but people, people need to learn not to overreact yeah. on that because that's pure and simple Quaresma's exactly. passion for the game that he's showing um, and, and you know people are constantly complaining about that they they can do something <laughs> um, so I'm not going to give you an excuse to bleep me here but I think that's a little you know that's what you want to yeah. see out of your players that they, they are so hungry to play and he's 35 years old and he's still well 34 and he's so hungry to play and I think you know uh, given Lenz's performance tonight I would probably say give him rest against uh, Linz, let Quaresma start, and then on Sunday you start Lenz again. That's how you start. That's how you start rotating, and that's how you keep both of them satisfied. You can, you know, put Quaresma on, let him play for 60, 70 minutes, or you take Babel off and you leave, leave him on for 90 minutes. Uh, and you give Lenz 20 or so minutes in, in the second half, and then uh, on Sunday you do the same thing, and you give Quaresma 20 or 30 minutes yeah. in the second no, and- half. And that's and that's how you keep both of them happy, and uh, both of them will stay all confident three of them that even way. To include Babel in that mix, no, I think yeah, really they're, they're exactly. such quality players, and the quality is so like obvious to all of them that none of them mm-hmm. can be too disappointed by the prospect of sharing time with any of the others. But certainly, yeah, you have to make sure to give everyone their burn. And I think you know, even if Lens is not injured which hopefully he's not you still say hey you know what this guy needs a rest he's been playing at a very high quality thus far and we want to make sure he's maintaining that going into our next league league, league match so yeah and plus quaresma's showed yeah, quaresma's showed kind of a, a little bit of a what's the word i'm looking for not cold feet because that has a different meaning you know but he's just been cold right he's he, a cold streak he's been he's shown a cold streak a little bit in that last match when it came in off the bench against Linz, and uh, yeah, I think maybe against Linz it could be a good chance to to get him his opportunities and ease him back into the rotation, get him some significant playing time. Hopefully he settles back into the the rotation as well. But you know, and then there's also Gokan Tore. so uh, there's mm. there's depth, there are yeah. options. Yeah, I'm not too broken up about today you know how i feel about it like the guy hasn't played in four and a half years like let's relax he'll get his chance he he will have to sit in line and wait that's my opinion now uh, i think that today is a high potential player but um you know um he had his chance before he kind of threw it away himself by forcing a move, um, and I think that that that's the right way to just let him just let him wait. Yeah. You can ease him in, and if he then when when you ease him in and he grabs his chance and he pays back your confidence, then you can say, look, we're gonna give you a contract extension. If he um, if he refuses it, then you stop playing him. Let him go on a free next in, in the summer, but uh, stop playing him. Yeah. Let him sit another half uh, another. 10 months on the bench then. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, with Ture there is, uh, at, at the moment, you have to keep in mind with Quaresma going on 35. Lenz is 30, but he'll be 31 this year. Babel is, is just turned 32 or is turning 32. So you, you have uh, your three main wingers are in their 30s. So with Ture, who is um, 26, you know, you still got some some good mileage on that guy left so definitely don't throw him away um, and try to but, but but you have to keep in mind he has an expiring contract so he, he needs to re-sign before you invest too much time into him and it's not worth sacrificing any of the, the, the tree ringers you have right now if he's going to walk on a free in the summer and then join Fenerbahce or Galtre, for example no I, I can't I can't disagree with that logic at all I think you're absolutely right I think you have to um you know, you have to rationally look at it beyond that even. I mean, there's, you know that you're getting a bare minimum of X amount of talent from those three guys that you can't genuinely 
say you're going to get from Tour de consistently anyway. So uh, until that's not the case, they have to be the priority and they have the pedigree and the talent, you know, that I think they've clearly merited those positions throughout their careers and throughout their performances with Bessie Touch. So, yeah, I mean, that doesn't mean I'm not wishing for the best for Gokhan Tour. I mean, I, I hope he wows us and he, he changes our opinion and makes us feel like he has to play, you know, but that's not the case yet. I think we can say for both of us. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, on that note, there's the, I, I don't know if there's a lot more to say about this match. Is there any, do you have any sort of closing comments about it, Khan? Promising showing next week. There's a, uh, you know, we did what we had to do. I think that um, I said before this match that I don't care how we win. It can be an ugly win as long as we win. We did that. It wasn't an ugly win in my opinion. I think it was a deserved win. We, we showed some really good football f uh, for, let's say, a three-fourth of the game, maybe. Um, we saw the potential of this team, where it can grow towards. But we also saw the, the, the shortcomings that, that really urgently need to be solved. And if if Bistich, if the board solved those 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 po those weak points in the team within the next uh, just a bit under three weeks, um, then I think this team has a fantastic opportunity, fantastic chance at the title. Um, I think that uh, that with a striker, with a ten, with a goalkeeper, that we can count ourselves maybe even the favorites. Yeah. Um, but that won't make it mean it will be easy because Bashakshi here, uh, they will be a, a serious contender. Um, uh, it will have to wait and see how Galtzrai deal with their fixture congestion. Um, I think Fenerbahce now with, with their transfer of Slimani, they will be a contender for sure because that was their big hole in the team that they didn't have a proper striker except for maybe Soldado, but even Soldado, you know, I think in, in the Turkish league, uh, a good uh, target man that can score goals works a little bit better. Uh, so I definitely think that they made a yeah. really good move there. Maybe not financially, but, but sportively for sure. So I think this is going to be a four horse race. And if we want to be prepared and not be ill prepared, we need to make those moves. Is If Bishes don't do anything on the transfer market anymore, which <laughs> I, I, you know, I think we're all kind of eerily getting that feeling, even though it com would be completely unacceptable. And, and I'm sure they'd be all like, yes, but the, the economy and this and that. And, and, and there's, you know, they'd probably be right in a way. But Sleep there's money. also... <laughs> there's also guys like Sleep Money come, take, or Onyekuru, right? I mean, the other guys are bringing in talent. You have to take a certain... You have to take a certain amount of calculated risk because, yes, you can say, okay, you know, uh, the, the economy is so bad right now. If we make a transfer, we're going to have some serious financial fair play issues at the end of the road. Um, but I think regardless, uh, if the economy is so bad and you don't get Champions League football, then you're going to be in problems anyway uh, yeah. in, our, in our case. So we need to do something. There's no question about that. And if we do, I, I really fancy our chances. If we don't or inadequately do so, then uh, it's going to be a long season with some good football, but ultimately yeah. come up short. I think you're right. I think that's probably where we close it out. And I think that's exactly the, the sort of messaging we need to be getting from this match. We obviously have talent that was really never a question and when you have guys like pepe you know we, we have positionally probably the best defense in the league i think our midfield certainly stacks up with fenerbahce and uh, the, the big issue is up front you know we don't stack up with our opponents at the moment there um and then even if we did we don't necessarily have the means to distribute the ball to anyone up there with too much um, unpredictability, right? Like if we're always coming from the wings. I mean, I think that number 10 sort of unlocks that next level for us where we have more versatility up front and we're less predictable. But at the end of the day, we're getting our points. In the Turkish League, we, we clearly have a team that compete, that can compete. But that's that's not what we're going for. We're, we're not just trying to compete. We're trying to win titles. We're trying to trying to add stars to the crest so um you know i don't think anyone 
should leave this match feeling like we've got all the pieces we need and we can just move on out like that's the case. But we got three points. It was a yeah. good win, and that's how we're starting things off, guys. That's that's, a, that's all. That's that's the hope. The most we could be hoping for out of the match. So, congratulations to all of us, Black Eagles podcast listeners. This week, we have a special feature. Before uh, before I have Khan send us out, stay tuned after the theme song, which hopefully you are anyway, because that theme song is so damn good. But. Uh, I, I always do. I know I uh... stick it out. Right, the goodbye Liverpool. It's a great way to. It's a great way to send yourself out as a Bay Touch fan. But anyway, uh, this time stick around beyond the goodbye Liverpool. Uh, Khan, why don't you tell us a little bit about, about that segment? Yeah, Emra Hasturk, uh, who is uh, one of the guys uh, that works uh, with Bistis International, of course, and he also has his own uh, football project going on that he just started, uh, Gesgin Football, which you can also find on Twitter, at Gesgin Football, I think, uh, football, F-U-T-B-O-L. Um, he's going to, he's he's a season ticket holder at Bistis at Vodafone Park, so every week, hopefully, every uh, other week when we play at home, he'll uh, hopefully send his, um, uh, I hope not too trunk, drunken talk of the match um, and you know just uh, have you can listen to it maybe uh, experience the, the atmosphere a little bit I think he sent his fragment today a little bit late but hopefully if we do it again in the future he'll send it while still in the stadium so you can maybe pick up and sniff up a little bit of the atmosphere while fans are leaving the stadium and just you know get his quick thoughts of, of the, his perspective from the stands yeah that'd be fantastic so on that note let's send it uh Let's send us ourselves out for the episode. And then, like I said, stay tuned after the theme song to hear some thoughts of Emre's and, and to, to gain a sense of what it was like in the stadium. Some of the sights and so, I guess, more, more just the sounds given our podcast. But uh, yeah, stick around. And on that note, Khan, why don't you send us out as you will? Yes, indeed. Uh, a, a victory to build on, let's call it that. And uh, yes. hopefully a team to further build on. We have laid the foundations now to a good season with a, with, a, with a first win. And we have the foundations to a really good team. But that still needs to be finished by the board now. So it's up to them. Right. Okay, so I, yeah, that's it for, for today. We don't really have anything else to talk about. So thank you very much for listening. Follow Bishkish International at Bishkish underscore int. Follow our podcast at Eagles underscore podcast follow my co-host Sinan Schwarting at sir underscore right underscore a lot there's a lot of underscores in those uh, in those hash in those handles and then of <laughs> course me the, the, the underscoreless man at Rosarian R-A-Z-Z-E-R-I-A-N yeah Zed man <laughs> um, General Zod <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's it. Well, uh, and then uh, there's only one left thing left to say. Go basic Tash! <laughs> All right, man. Hey guys, uh, just reached my car, got out of the stadium, it took a while to get there and still I'm a little bit drunk but you know. Um, so about the game, you know it's the first game of the season uh, as far as the Super League, of course not the UEFA but um, it was actually the first time uh, compared to the other two games that we had at home, it was actually the first time that I saw the uh, the fans were actually ready for this. Um, the whole environment before the match was just crazy. It was like the old days 
Although during the match, I didn't really like the fans um, like before. The past few years, we've been we've been pretty bad with that. But um, it was much better than the the past two games. The past two games were ridiculous. Um, but yeah, the fan wise, you know, before the game, it was much better. And um, as a season ticket holder during the game. You know, you expect not to watch the game, but um, chant pretty much throughout the game. But that's unfortunately not the case anymore, because especially on our end, we're a little bit higher end, and most people are just sitting and watching the game. But um, you know, it's still good. Uh, as far as the game, what I think is that watching live. Of course, I'm still going to go home and. Uh, Rewatch the game, but um, I, f I feel like Lens has been a great impact this year, and hopefully he continues this way. It just it's, it's a proof why Quaresma didn't go in and um, didn't play at all. Um, so I think Lens does deserve the the spot, and he should get better. I don't know why on earth Bobulus they're still playing um, he shouldn't be in the 11 I know he scores every now and then he scored the past two games but um, he doesn't do anything else and it's not like Taliska how he scored and he disappeared no Bobulus just it's just I don't know it's his way of playing is pretty annoying um, I feel like Ozzy is uh, getting back to his shape even though he's not a 90 minute player yet uh, i think he, he can contribute more but with a number 10 if he can get back to the number eight position he can contribute much more than now i don't know why today tall guy played as much as he did he wasn't there Najib, of course um, you know he's our son he's our He's the last man standing, and um, he does play well every now and then. But that's him. It's just his quality. He's not going to get any better than this. And when you have Vida and Enzo in the in the in the you know squad, and you don't play them, but you play Nijib with Pepe, it's what you expect um, from you know from the defensive side. Other than that, um, I don't think anything and anyone else did really make a big impact. I feel like Lauren is going to get better, but he's just not mature enough to be the key player yet. Love, I think we should get rid of him as soon as we can. I know everyone's keen on getting rid of um, Negredo, but um, I feel like Negredo can be a great 442 player and he should stay but love is just just driving me crazy driving everyone crazy really it's not the first time he uh, he missed a sitter and um, he's, he just doesn't deserve to be there honestly but other than that um, it was a good first game for us especially against Akusar who is uh, you know one of our annoying rivals so I think we did well. Three points is three points. I don't really care how it comes. So we did um, get those three points, especially since uh, all our rivals already won. It was very important. Um, now let's focus on, on Thursday. But um, the main question for me is, is Shano Ganesh going to play the same players again and again? Because we know he's stubborn and he doesn't play new players. So hopefully on Thursday we'll see some new players um, on the pitch. If not, uh, it might cause some problems. But yeah, three points it is. Cheers.